We are going to continue with where we start. But before we continue there, because we are now in the characteristics of one born to again. I know you have listened to it, but there is a reason why God is pointing to that. Because if you miss it, if you miss it, my brother and sister, those characteristics, if you miss any one of them, you are missing God. Because you cannot walk with anyone. Benedict is there. Because I see, my, I see my, I see my, I see my friend, the, the, the professor Benedict is there. And one thing is clear: you cannot work with somebody when you are in disagreement with the person. Everybody, please listen to me. You cannot work together with somebody except you are in agreement. That's what makes one together. And that is why people don't seem to understand the word of God, the scripture. You know, there was one time in Nigeria, I think somewhere in an Ebony state, and it mentioned something like, where two or three are gathered, gathered, everybody jumped in and said, oh, I'm there. And I said, is that what God said? They said, yes. Even the pastor, where two or two gathered, I'm there. But you have forgotten together. You have to gather together. Otherwise, you are not in agreement. That's what I'm talking about this characterization. But before we do that, let's make sure my brothers and sisters in Lagos are established and they understand that which is the only fundamental, that which is the fact the thing you have to have, otherwise all these things we are talking about, the characteristics of this and this and this will not work. Without it, without it, if you get it, if you get only this one thing, then every other thing we're talking about, you will see, it will be repetition of the same scripture, going back and forth, referring you to the same thing. Of God. You know why? You know why? Because God does not change. That's why he said, heaven and earth can even pass away, but my word will not pass away. That's why he said, all flesh is grass. Forget about what they are saying or what they are doing. But one thing I want you to do, the word of God endures forever. Brothers and sisters, from Genesis to Revelation, if you understand this and you pick it up and the spirit of God comes in inside you to teach you, you will see it's the same thing going all over. And sometimes when we're talking, when we're talking about it, you think, oh, this is like, it's, it's redundant. It's repeating the, the same thing. Look at Jesus Christ. Every teaching of Jesus Christ, if you watch it, was redundant. Was going back again. Referring back to the word of God, because you cannot stray away from any word of God, you have to be straight. So, looking at that now, my people in Lagos, and because of the time we have, because we have to deal, deal with a lot. You know, we meet only once a month. So, when we meet like this, I feel so, a little bit kind of troubled, because it doesn't give us room to do as much, and then come again, and we see again one month. And there are people who hear this message every day, almost every day here. But yet, for how many years now you come back to them, they are lost. So let us look at this. Let us look at this. For us to understand where we're going, please. What is the only purpose of our calling? Look at we are coming. And this will be short, 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 short things I'm going to touch right now before we get into the what we're supposed to talk today. But if you don't really fully and completely grasp this one we're talking about right now, stop and forget wasting your time. You will not understand the rest. It will not stink in. What is the only purpose that God has called us to himself? After all, you're not the only people in Lagos in, in, this, in this world. Why? 
I need to move on. Please help me because otherwise, otherwise, he tells me that. He said, I don't know why. And this is what the Lord told this as I was sitting down here, he said, go back to that and go that with Lagos. Because there are other people who hear, like Colombia, they hear the message every week, every week, every week. But you have the tape. But even if I told you have the tape, brothers, I'm telling you one thing. You will never, you will never comprehend all the details of the revelation of the mysteries that God is teaching, which I'm not the one teaching it. I tell you, my brother, I'm not the one. What is the only purpose? Is to obey and do his will. Yes, I know that. God bless you, my professor. But what is the only purpose I told you? Have that forever in your mind before you step to any other thing concerning God. What is the only purpose? The only one purpose of God calling us to himself for us is to be saved. I know that also. You're right. You're all, you're all hitting the same point. For us to represent him and save others. How are you going to represent him and save others? That's what I'm looking for. By doing his will. No, I, I agree. How do you represent how do you represent him and get others? That's by something I want. Will. By doing his will, I agree. Yes. By being one with him. By being, by one. being one with him. Whoever said that, by being, listen to me carefully, by being one with him. What is being one with him? Conformed to his image. Transformed to his image. Righteousness and holiness. Because Sister Joanne has told you, and I'm going to tell her not to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> my brother and sister listen that is what you must understand and grasp and hold it tight if you don't understand that that's a problem because you wouldn't know where you're going okay God bless you to be transformed to his image we're not going to waste money because if you have time you go ahead and review Romans 8.29 28, 29. I don't know, Pastor can even, because, Pastor, please go on. Let us make sure, because there may be new people there. Romans 8, 28 and 29. Yes. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That he may be conformed to the image of his son. That is the only purpose. So let me ask you this. What is the only purpose why Christ came? To save the mankind from destruction. To save the mankind from destruction. He told us, is, if you look at what he told us in, what, in Luke 19.10, he said the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost, to get them back to the image of God that was lost. Brothers and sisters in Lagos, pause and stop. If that is not the only purpose you are pursuing God, you will miss him. You will not get it. Then you will not be in agreement whatsoever with him. Because when there's a conflict in purpose, you cannot achieve what the purpose is all about. Please understand, that's where we're going now. Before we get into the characteristics, of one born again, which we did last time in heart, but we're going to go to the mind. But this will give you the whole clue. All you need to know, indeed, you get to that point right now. So our then, if that is our purpose, to be transformed 
to the image of his son, to regain, to regain, to restore the lost image which was lost when Adam and Eve sinned. You know the story. We don't have to get to that. God created man and woman in his own image. And that image is what? And that, was, that should tell you where you are. If you are following God. What is that image? Professor okay. Selwa. Huh? Uh, image of God. He said that what is the image of God? To be holy, live a righteous life, and avoid sin. I know my professor will go for that. Yeah, when he goes, uh, look for that. <laughs> you got you got it to be holy. That is all. If you are not working to achieve that purpose, you are working contrary to God. Everybody, please. And people may say, oh no, it's not possible to be holy. That's why God has brought Lagos to give you, to open your eyes and show you. Say, what I'm talking about is easy. If you will listen to me and follow what I've asked you to do, rather than complaining, it's not easy. I can, who can, who can do it? It's when I tell you to do something, you said it's, nobody can do it. It's not easy. You know what they're telling me? You are telling me I don't want to do it. Do, do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. So what should then be the only objective? Yeah, mm -hmm. only, I'm talking about true Christian, one who actually wants to be one with God. That's what I'm talking about. Not everyone will hear this message and get it. Just like Christ. He told you not many. And he told you that many are called, but only a few are going to be chosen. Because those who are willing to do, those who will to do the will of my father. Father Charles, give us, please, John 7, 17. John 7, 17. Yes, sir. If anyone wills to do his will, hmm. he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own. Do we, under, do we see that, my brother and sister, if anyone wills to do his will, most of us, that's the biggest problem. That's where we are different from Christ. Christ's mind. We're going to get to it now. Christ's mind. We're different. You know why? Instead of saying, oh, Master, Lord, my God, what do you want me to do? Even before God would finish, even before God would finish, you have to be holy. Most of us would even jump and say, Oh, it's not, it's not possible. How do you say we have to be holy? You got to listen, first of all, what he's saying. If you are truly willing, the willingness, the willingness, which is actually what? The determination to do whatever that is required of you, that takes a servant heart, humility. I am willing to do what I'm required to do. Then you will hear the voice of the matter, matter very well and do it. But if you begin to say, oh, it's hard. I can't do it. You already have said, I don't want to do it. And that resistance is sufficient to really what? Put you off. So what should be the only objective then? Since we know what the purpose is. Lagos. It's to obey. What are you obeying? The will of God. I know that. I said, what? What I am talking about? What should be the objective? What should be? Okay, let me put it this way. What then should be your focus? To be to make eternity at the end of the day. I know you guys give me too much grammar. What it should be the, the only purpose, only objective that I have. The only objective I have will have 
is to make sure I achieve what? That I fulfill that purpose. Of God. Yeah, my brother, if you're doing business, whatever you're doing, or job, or school, the purpose for you to go to school, it's what can we get you? The purpose is for us to make heaven. We must do his will and be stand fast with him. That is the purpose, my professor. That is the purpose. That is the mindset we're going to talk about. That is the mind. Where is your mind focus? If you focus there, then you have to do it as Christ does it. That is what the objective is. And that is why Paul said, if anyone is running a race, he don't run with uncertainty. You have to focus if you want to get what you're looking for. You are doing business. You are going to school. You are, getting, you are married. You want to accomplish and make sure that marriage is success. Then you must put your mind where you want it to be. And you focus your mind. You don't let that mind shift. If it shifts, the purpose now is in trouble. Are we all together here? Yes. Well, let's start. Please give us 1 Corinthians 9. 23 to 20, 27, please. First Corinthians 9. What verse? Sir? 23 to 27, please. First Corinthians 9. I didn't get the 23 to 27. Can you hear me? Yes. Pastor, can you hear me? 23 to 27. Pastor Charlie, are you having a problem? 23. Now, 23. Uh, he can't. Uh, okay. First Corinthians, can you hear me? Yes, we I can. I can hear you. First Corinthians 9, 26, 27. No, 23 to 27. 23 to 27. Why are you having a problem, Pastor Charles? 23 to 27. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. I've lost. 23 to 27. I know, but can they hear me? I can hear you. Yes. 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 First Corinthians 9, 23 to 27. Yes. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone hold who competes for the can prize you hear me? is temperate in all things. Can you hear me? Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, Thus I fight. Okay, can okay, I'm, yeah. can you tell him I'm having technical problems with my okay. Mm. Give me a second, please. Let me okay. He says he's having technical problems. Okay. I can hear now. Okay. Doc, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear anything, but I can hear now. It's all right. Okay, I can hear now, but I missed everything you said. What did you say? No, when you started, you read it. Okay. I think I tried to stop you on the 23rd. Okay, let's 24. 24. Okay, 24. Okay, I'm back there. I'm sorry. My computer just went back, but it's back. It's okay. Now. It's okay. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Now, my people, my people, please listen to me. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Not 
for you to run my own way or the way of your pastor or bishop or pope. Run in such a way according to the prescribed rule of God. Remember, he is the only judge. I want you to please make a note of that. Run in such a way that you may obtain. Not like a fool running for the sake of running, but running that you may obtain it. That's what the objective is all about. When objective is focus, you know, like maybe, what, what can I say? Fix. You fix your objective and you don't let anything to divert you, to distract you. Then you will be saving even money, if it's for business, you'll be saving it. Everything is focused on that. If you make a mistake and begin to take out of that very money and divert it to something else, my brother and sister, you may run into problem because God, with him there is no partiality. That's what I want us to understand. Pastor, keep going. Let us finish. Sorry about that. Now you're having a major problem. <laughs> you're muted, PC. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> First Corinthians 9 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run Pastor, 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 Charles, Pastor Charles. Yes, sir. If everyone, those who are running, my people listen to me, and that is where we are going next to the priority. Mm -hmm. If everyone running this race, they are all temperate in all things. Can you believe that? They are all temperate. The objective is so fixed and strong because they want to accomplish perishable, earthly, fleshly things on this earth. Things that you use and they perish with using. How much more then should you focus on that which is not perishable? unless you don't understand the value of what is not perishable. We are not brought up that way. Our, our way of life, human beings, that's why God said you must be totally and completely transformed and what? That is the purpose. If that transformation does not happen, there is no one who's going to be able to understand this. Go on, my, my brother. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we, for an imperishable crown, Therefore, I run thus, mm -hmm. not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who busy the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Brothers and sisters, go ahead and make note of these verses and these scriptures. Paul told us precisely how to obtain this? How to obtain this? And the only requirement. What is Paul telling us here is the only requirement? <laughs> what is Paul telling you and I said, if you are running with a purpose, this is the only, only, only requirement. The requirement is for us to discipline our body and be subjected to the will of God. Thank you very much, my professor. Let us get that and put it in our pocket and move on. As long as you understand this, then every other thing we're going to be talking about, you get it. Then the next thing we talked about was what? This objective. You know, you know what Paul said there? Listen to me. Everybody, please pick it up and write jot distance down, no matter how long or short. Make sure you get it. I asked a question. 
And my brother, the professor Bennett, answered right. Paul said, in all these things, you know, whatever the objective is, this is how it is accomplished. Do you see why the Bible said the only way you are going to accomplish the objective, the way the objective will lead you to the purpose, to uh, fulfill the purpose, is only if you do it in fear of God. And that's what Paul was saying. I discipline my body. I make sure there is no death. I make sure there is no blemish. I make sure I'm not taken away by earthly things, whereby I offend God. Because I cannot offend God and say that God and I are in, a, in agreement. It doesn't work that way. Are we, are we, do you understand what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? Yes. It doesn't work that way. So that's why the Bible said, Professor, can you give us, please, 2 Corinthians 7 1. 2 Corinthians 7 1. Yes, sir. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's, you see, the same thing Paul is saying. Let us cleanse ourselves because that's the only way we're going to really. What fulfill that purpose? God bless you, Lagos, and I thank God for bringing this for us to get this understanding. I'm not the one say, telling you this, I didn't write these things, but that's the way it is. And we know the one we're talking about, and that's why I asked you his nature, he's holy, he does not change. So he's telling us this is the way you handle it. Then the next thing we went to go to, you see how the, the thing is falling in, in sequence. Purpose, objective. Get that right. Otherwise, there is no point if you don't have the purpose right. Don't worry about setting objective. You'll be setting objective as a fool because there is nothing for you to set objective, objective on. So you have to understand, master the purpose, master the objective, then, before you go to the next one we talked about, which is understanding the priority. What is the value of this thing to me? Every single person there, there in this area. Because I asked you the first one, you, you have a problem with it. What is the priority to you? What's the value? What value do you attach this? Because whatever you value, you attach something. That's where your heart is going to go to achieve it. If the value is all that matters to you, depending on you, brothers and sisters, search yourself and begin to work on that. Is eternal life, being with him, fulfilling that purpose, is that more important to you than any other thing? If the answer is no, stop wasting your time. If the answer is yes, then you must give it all that you have. And that's where I want us to understand the priority. Matthew, please, 13, 44 to 46. Matthew 13, 44 to 46. Yes. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Let's stop right there, Pastor Charles. All the things we've been going to, all the things we've been talking about, remember, remember purpose, objective, and then we are now, uh, we talk about this priority. If you look at all the scriptures we've been reading and going through, now can you answer me, and I will have asked this before, what are the things that God says you, go, this thing that's important, go and sell everything and buy it. What are you selling? Because most of us think that 
Go ahead. Can you tell me what are we selling that is telling you to sell? It's telling us to, for, to forget about the worldly things and focus our attention with him to make that heaven we are searching for. That, that's it. Prioritize it. It's not saying actually, my professor is right, always. I love to see him. He's not saying, forget about all fleshly things. He's not saying that. He's saying, earthly things, they mean nothing. They mean nothing. If you have not even understood, there's one earthly thing I want to tell you right now that will give you an example of what it means and it means nothing. You know, there is nothing that's more important to any human being than to get put food in his mouth. Right? Or her mouth. You buy those wonderful fresh vegetables and so on in the market. They are fresh. They are cooked. They are, almost, they are dead already when you cook them. And then you eat them. That's gone. Tomorrow you go back. You're looking for food again. That's eight liters. All eight liters must perish. Listen to me. They must perish. That's one that all nothing that's more important. And God is not asking you to do much about that because He knows that human beings are going to, they will rebel. He tells you, that's only one thing I want you to sell. Sell yourself. Sell what is keeping you down from being one with me. Sell that thing that separates you and me. If you want to achieve the purpose, which is to be transformed into my image. Then you must sell that thing. You must destroy that thing that separates you from me. What is it that separates us from God? You know, we always go to church okay. and it's our sin. Our sin. God bless Lagos. Our sin. That is all that God, God is asking. What do you ask your children? Tell me what you ask your own children every time not to do. Is it not to do not to do what will harm them? So what what wrong has God done by saying, "Emeko Zurumba, you know you are, what you are doing is not right. All you can do, stay away from it. Then you and I can walk together, brother and sister. That is all that God requires. I will come." You cannot do anything. You can't transform yourself. I, God, will do it by my spirit. But you have to open. You have to let go. You have to enter. I'm not going to force you. This is the way. Follow the right way. But I will not force you. But if you don't follow the right way, these are the consequences that will happen. That's what we tell our children. Even at this point right now, I know, I know one thing. In our culture, in our culture, all of you, including Peter, Peter just came in not too long ago. I took all these things. I remember one thing I have to tell you right now. After so many years, I grew up here in the US. I left the US just pretty much after high school to come here and all my schooling, everything was here. At your age right now, if you have your mother, no matter how old you are, and you go to visit your mother, and you do something that your mother does not like, you know, you will see your mother frown at you and tell you, I was surprised, I came, when I came back from my, my, my to visit my, my mother, and I was told to, I was to come and have a dinner at night with, with some people in Lagos. I was in the village. I said, Mom, I will see you later. You know, just typical. I will mean, see you later. My friends are here to take me down to this. Thing. He said, where are you going? Can you believe that? I said, I'm going to where? He said, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. He said, yes. And suddenly, it occurred to me. That's my mother. You better keep your mouth shut. She knows why you said you're not going anywhere. She knows. I'm not going to start questioning you why. 
why do one will not go anywhere? That is a challenge which we train our children not to do. Don't worry, maybe eventually your mother will tell you, my child, you know one thing, this is the reason why I didn't want you to go. But at that point, he told you that don't challenge her. Are we together, my people? Yes, sir. So from there, we move into the what? The only requirement of God. Get this in Lagos, in that small group of this small group in Lagos. Get this. Then every other thing we'll be talking about from now until the kingdom comes, we we'll go back to the same thing. The word of God. What is the only requirement of God? Because if you have the purpose, you have the objective, and then you have the priority made up of, then the next thing will be, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is the only requirement of God? To be the obedience. Own up to him. What is the only requirement of God? To do his will. See, that's, maybe that's why God said to do this, because we could have gone on. What is the only requirement of God to be like him? To keep his commandments. To be one Amen. with him. Mm -mm. You are telling me the same thing. You are saying the same thing. Listen to yourself. You are telling me the same thing. And I keep shaking, shaking my head. And you keep telling me the same thing also. also. What is if you want to build a house, you start with what? Foundation. What is the only foundation of God or foundation of this purpose or this eternal life? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Otherwise, they are building in vain. If the builder is building without the foundation, is to fear God. Is to fear God. Fear God. Is to fear God. You cannot say obey God. You cannot obey God in disobedience. Mm -hmm. My people get it. In fact, if you get this, you have gotten the word of God. Mm -hmm. Every other thing then shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I'm, I'm telling you, first, that one, that's what I want to tell you. Every other thing shall be added unto you. The fear of God. If you perfect the fear of God, everything we talk about, the structure, whatever it is, a structure is no structure except there is a solid foundation. So with that solid foundation, you can put up the, the wall, you can put up the roof, you can do whatever you want to do. Without a solid foundation, those things will collapse. Right? Yes, sir. So, the fear of God. What is the fear of God? To depart from all evil. To depart from all evil. Then that begins to ask you right now, check yourself. That's why the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves. Examine yourself. If you are really in faith, if you are really following the pattern and the work of God, if I'm building a house and I give you, you are the builder, and I give you my blueprint, and you build not according to my blueprint, what's going to happen? That will be a demolition. You ask him to. I, I, I love my professor. That will be a demolition. Let's get this once and for all. My people, God is not going to make a different rule for you in Lagos. He's not going to make a different rule for me. He didn't make for Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses, after 40 something years, pleaded, Please, Father, let me enter. He said, You will never. You know, you are going to go ahead and climb the mountain and see Lagos with your own eyes. But they're not going to enter into Lagos as I leave because you failed me. My people, I'm just trying to tell you right now. And the Bible told us one thing. 
in Psalm 127, 1, it said, the builder builds in vain. If what? Bless the Lord. I help the Lord. But the Lord is not going to build with you when you are against the Lord. You and the Lord have to be one. That is what the requirement and objective. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. So the fear of God is to depart from all evil. If you do that, that God calls an inheritance that you have got for yourself, inheritance in the kingdom of God. Why? Because God will come in. And not only you, it will become an inheritance for your own, your generations. Are we, are we together? Are we together? Yes, yes sir. sir. Pastor, Deuteronomy 529, please. Yes, yes sir. sir. Deuteronomy 5, 29. Mm -hmm. Oh, that they have such a heart in them that mm -hmm. they will fear me and always keep all my commandments that it might be well with them and with their children forever. This is God telling you. He does not lie. He's not going to change. That it may be well if they will fear me. And that's why he also told us that that is the only duty of man. <laughs> In Ecclesiastes 12, 13, he said that's a whole duty. No matter whatever you do, that's a whole duty. And the Bible calls that because of time. Okay, Pastor has had that. Oh, okay. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. It is a whole duty of man. And you know what actually happens, my people? In the New Testament, the Bible also told us one thing. I want everybody to listen to this. That there is only one foundation. What is that only one foundation? If anyone says he's a true Christian or he wants to make it to the kingdom of God, there's only one foundation. What is that foundation? Jesus Christ. Jesus, Christ. Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Right. My brother said, Jesus Christ. So that's all. Let's start 1 Corinthians 3 11, please. 1 Corinthians 3 11. Yes. For no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So what is that foundation that he laid? Foundation of truth. What is that only foundation that Jesus Christ laid? Truth. He reconciled man to God. The foundation Jesus Christ laid is to do the will of his father. What is the only foundation that Jesus Christ laid? He said, he said only foundation is Christ. So what is that foundation? Repentance. Repentance. Yeah, we, we are all guessing now. You are trying very well. Repentance. The only, that only foundation is zero iniquity. Mm -hmm. To be holy. Zero sin or iniquity. Listen to me. This is the Bible. I'm not going to. Pastor, give us 2 Timothy 2.19, please. 2 Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. Mm -hmm. Let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Hmm. Does that not tell you one thing? Most of us, you know, there was one time I asked everybody, how, to, how many of you are, were, were born again? I, almost every hand was there. But it tells you there that God knows those only, those, only God knows those who are born again, who are his. That should scare you. Stop thinking that you have got it when you have not gotten it because you don't know. Only God can tell who has gotten it? It's for you to work very hard to get it. But let the judgment be his. Your, your job 
Your job is to make sure you are one with him and getting it the way he said it. And there's only one thing you can do to be one with him. Depart from any and all sins. Otherwise, God will not have fellowship with you. Then God knows those who are his. And he tells us, those who are mine are those who have departed from iniquity. Do we, do we get that? Yes, yes sir. sir. God bless Lagos. But departing from iniquity is not enough. You have to depart from iniquity. This second, everybody please listen to me. Everybody please listen to me. You have to decide to depart from iniquity this second and you must stay that way until the end. Otherwise, you, are, you may not make it. Why am I saying this second? I said, depart from all iniquity, everything that smells like, everything that works like, everything that looks like, whatever it is that is iniquity, that is sin, that God does not want. You can do it. If you say you cannot do it, you are, you are lying because you can do it. If there is like even a cup of water now, even if I thought you are thirsty, this cup of water now, and somebody brings it to you and you are still stuck and it's, it's like almost like dying because you want to drink water. And somebody comes and puts poison in it. I say, this water is poison. But it's, what, it's water. It's poison water. No matter how thirsty you are, you're going to say, no way. I will not drink it. I'd rather die. You see, this is, the, this is the situation that we have here. So what am I saying? Why am I saying this second? Whatever you are doing, whatever I have gone in the past, I'm talking to myself. You may want to take it or you don't want to take it, but I'm talking to myself. Every flesh, every man, every vapor, every grass must take note the moment and the second. Because the next second is not granted to anybody. Are we all together? Yes, sir. And then you must consistently. Consistency is just more important than anything. The problem with many of us is that we start, we begin. I mean, our beginning looks okay. And then our mind or whatever shifts. And then something happens. Then we have labored in vain. That's why God is telling you. You look at Christ saying, whoever endures and keeps my word to the end, not who endured one day or two days or three days. And if you allow, if you make sure that there is no iniquity, the Spirit of God will come in and do the impossible. This thing you're saying, how can I endure this thing to the end? The Spirit of God will come in. Look at Jesus Christ saying one thing. The worst, the worst I did, I didn't do them. It was my Father in me doing them. Did you, hear, did you hear what Christ said? My people, are you following me? Yes, yes sir. Okay, Pastor, please give us John. John 14, 10. John 14, 10. Yes. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. But let me ask you this. Why you have that scripture? Look at that verse. Why does the Father do the works? Because Christ has surrendered totally to him. He has decided to do his will and not of his own mind. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Is there, I'm, I'm going to look at that verse. He said, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? That is a key. Christ is in me and I'm in Christ. Therefore, he does these things by saying it was difficult to do that unto the end. Please. And it, why is it me? I have perfected the fear of him. That is all. This is why is in me. Everybody, please listen. So it is not one time of perfecting things. And then the next second, it goes away. Most of us will do that. Pastor, give us Revelation 2.26, please. Revelation 2.26. Yes. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, mm -hmm. to him I will give power over the nation. Until the end. Why this warning, my brother and sister, and why am I bringing this to you? Because I don't want any of us to have run in vain. Remember what Paul said? I bring every second, I bring my body, the flesh, fleshly desire, loss, the things I put before God. That is what he's talking about. The things I put before God. I bring them subject, obedient, my spirit. That is, if the spirit of God is in the person, so that's what I'm talking about. So the key thing is that the spirit of God is in you, which is the foundation that we are talking about here. So that's why the warning that we, God has warned us in many different ways, that if one believes he's, he's, he's gotten it and then makes a mistake and dies in it, all the good will not be remembered. Pastor Chuck, please do give us Ezekiel 33, 12 to 13. Lagos, I want you to, all of you, make notes of what you get and what you hear so you can always remember. Ezekiel 33, verses 12 to 13. Yes, sir. Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness mm -hmm. and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. He shall die. So, in other words, this person has labored totally, completely in vain. So, when you are running a race, run a race with certainty. Make sure that everything that distracts you or takes you away from that rest is destroyed. And then keep it that way. Maintain it. That's why Jesus Christ, towards the end, told us one thing. You know, the time has come for me to return my father. And with joy, I want to return. But right now, the ruler of darkness is coming. But who cares? Because he has nothing in me. You see, this is the defense, the shield there was he has nothing in me. If you don't have anything in me, why would you have to come and claim me? That's the difference that I'm talking about right here. Do you now see, my brothers and sisters, why the Bible gave us that shocker? There's a shocker in the Bible that shocks you, will shock you. He said, if the righteous, you know, most of us will claim to be righteous. If the righteous is scarcely saved, that's a very powerful word. Why? First Peter, please, 4, 17 to 18, Pastor Charles. First Peter 4, 17 to 18. Yes. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. 
And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Mm -hmm. Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Can you believe this? That even in the even in the scripture, the, the word of God, that particular that particular verse, if the righteous is scarcely saved, where that whole verse was is all in capital letters, is for you and me not to miss it. If the righteous is scarcely saved, does that not really, really shock you? If the righteous feel that he has gotten it, and most of us are totally in that very column, many, many of us, and from there, we are proud. We think we've gotten it, when we have not even gotten it. And we go about claiming. Everybody goes about, everyone in Nigeria claims to be, claims to be born again. But what is born again? And that's where we are. So that's why we're talking about this very, God just this very moment said, go back and giving you all these more details. Let us understand this. My God, I pray to my God for you to grasp this. If you grasp it, you have gotten it. If you stay on with it to the end. So that's why after that, we went to what? That's in sequence. What? That grace. What is grace? Because I'm, I'm only bringing what we went before, one went to before. What is grace? The grace of God. What is that? It's a very tough person. I know that's what he told me last time. That's what he told me again. <laughs> Jesus is grace. Jesus is the grace. Yeah. The way. Jesus is the grace. I know, Professor, you are right. It's a merited favor. But Jesus is grace and a merited favor that God sent to us without us paying anything, giving anything as a last sacrifice. But you are giving a merited favor. For what purpose? For us to reconcile to him. How? And be saved. How? For us to be like him. How? The same thing that Professor said. He has given us the grace to, to know God. For us to run away totally from sin. <laughs> <laughs> My brother Peter, you got half of it. God bless you. What is grace? Because, because all these things we'll be talking about purpose, objective, understanding priority, requirement. Boom. Grace. Number one, Peter got it. Number one, depart the same thing he told you. That's the first thing to do. Depart from evil. Then when you do that, it gives way for transformation, for spirit of God to come in. That is all about grace. He's a teacher. Do not listen to anybody telling you, oh, it's all about grace of God. You can do whatever you want to do. It's okay. One self, you are always self. Most of those people, if not all, that tell you that have never been saved before. But they, they believe and think they have been saved. Because if you are saved, born again, you do not go anymore to please the things of this world. You are a spirit of God. That's what we're getting into now. You cannot say, I'm saved. Born again. But you are still in the world. You cannot be in the world. And you're also in the spirit. It's not possible. A new wine cannot be in an old bottle. Are we together, my people in Lagos? Yes, yes sir. God bless you. So, grace of God is a teacher, teaching us two things. But the most important one is what? The grace of God came to teach us two things. And that two 
and one. Put it one. Teach is teaching us to only one thing. The same thing. The same only one requirement of God. What is that? How to run the race and make the crown. Peter, is that why you came late? <laughs> It's telling us to be, to be zero away from sin. Professor, God bless you. My people, try to listen to, oh my goodness, I pray to God. Listen to the voice of God. How easy? Did God say, my yoke is easy? My body is light? You wonder why? Do only one thing he tells you to do. The rest he will do, do them. If you look at Ezekiel, listen to me. Pastor, please, before we get to that, that grace, which you said right now, the requirement, what is the grace of God? The grace of God is to fulfill the only requirement of God. God, Christ came back to say, remember what my father said from the beginning. I came to tell you, this is grace. I am the grace now trying to tell you. Fulfill that only requirement of my father. That's all you need to do. Pastor, please, can you give us Ezekiel? 18. Just give us 30 to 31, please. Ezekiel 18, 30 to 31. Yes, sir. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Rep Repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. So what is the only requirement that God is asking, asking us there? It's to repent, repent and turn away from all transgressions. My brothers and sisters in Lagos, grab this. Forget about the next step. If you don't have this foundation, forget about the next step. The next step will not happen. The next step is that when you do this, then God will come in from chapter 31 and do the rest. Ezekiel 18, 31. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart mm -hmm. and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Mm. So who gives us this new heart and a new spirit? Jesus. Jesus. God, Jesus. And what is the only requirement for him to do that for us? Because of our repentance. Because we have to depart from evil. God bless you, my brothers and sisters in Lagos. Understand this and keep it to it. Anybody giving you all those big grammars, going back and forth here and there, forget about it. It doesn't get you anywhere. This is it. If you take your eyes off it, it won't work. And that's what grace is all about. That is what grace is. So, Pastor, give us grace. Titus, please. Two. Only 11. Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Mm. Jesus Christ has appeared to all men, the grace of God. And what did he tell us to do? Go to 12, please. That's it. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss. Everybody. We Pastor, could you please repeat that? Denying. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. That is the mind. Oh, my people, we are going to it now. That's the mind, the spiritual mind, the mind in Christ. Denying all ungodliness and worldly lust. Those things that mitigate against God, deny them. Reason why Jesus Christ also, when he called his apostles or disciples, sorry, each one of them said, if anyone is serious of following me, if he wants to come to me, 
Let him deny himself. Deny ungodly and worldly loss. And then that is the only way we will do that. The spirit of God that comes in and gives us a new heart and a new spirit will then lead us to live. Pastor, finish it, please. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That is, that's it, my brother, sisters. So from there, we left grace. That will understand grace. So when it comes to grace, please don't tell me it's unmerited favor. That's it. Because unmerited favor, my next question will be, if I'm giving you a favor, what did I give it for? And then you're going to tell me what it is. That's what it is. And that's why God said, nobody should abuse or insult that spirit of free gift. Then we went to baptism. Everything I'm trying to cover. What is baptism? The what? The what? Denying ourselves, denying every iniquity. That's it. That's it, Peter. Peter, Peter, you got it. God bless you. I mean. If you look at what we're talking about and focus on one thing and one thing only, everything about the word of God is the same thing. Denying all iniquity. That's baptism. It's not what we talk about what? That's the purpose of God. That's objective. That's the only priority. That's the only requirement. We never knew this thing for many, many years, even here where we are. God revealed all these things. Lately, for whatever reason, only God knows. Maybe his time is short. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. That's what baptism is all about. For it says denying iniquity. That's the only way you're going to die with Christ and be buried with him. Most of us celebrate we are risen with Christ. How can you even rise with Christ when you haven't even died and you have not even been buried? Many of us have not even died anything. And then we are claiming to have risen with Christ. So that's baptism. Pastor Romans 6, 4 to 6, please. Romans 6, 4 to 6. Yes. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism. Uh -huh. death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, yes. that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin. That's where we're going to go now. What is this old man that was crucified with him? Sin. Huh? Sin. Sin and worldly loss. Denying what? Ungodliness and worldly loss. Worldly desires. Thank you. Please make a very bold note of that. And because that's where we're going. That's where we're going, so you can understand. So we don't have to really deal so much now when it comes to the spiritual mind. That's what we're supposed to talk about today. If you get this thing, you have gotten spiritual mind what, where, where we're heading and what should be there. But the problem we have that many of us say we are new, but we are still old. And you can't be that. And you cannot be half half. And actually, when the Spirit of God is in you, have taken over, then that's where this characteristic of God. Because God said that if you are actually His, then the only way to show that is that you have to be transformed. 
That is what we're talking about now. We go now with, with spiritual heart. Let's talk about spiritual mind because this might take us more than one month. It might take us today and more because this is one biggest problem that we have. My people, we have. And that's one thing, no matter whatever you do, will disqualify you and will make you not be one with God. Is this mind I'm talking about right now, the old and the new, transformation means total. It's not half-half. It's no transformation. That's not half. If something still remains old, everything is not new. The Bible told us that all in Christ, they are all new creatures. And what has happened to them? Old things have passed away. All the old things have passed away. Are all the old things passed away in your life? All the fleshly, earthly desires that you put before God? That's one thing I want everybody to understand. Because most of us do not know one thing. We think that sin is if, when we lie. Or maybe when we commit to fornication or adultery. This is, this is what is sin. No. If you put anything fleshly, force, anything of this world, lustly things, force before God, that is not acceptable unto God. And that means what? You are not new yet. So transformation means what? When I say I'm transformed into the image of Brother Peter, what I mean? What do I mean? It means you have forget your own old self, your own self, and becomes like Brother Peter. Or a new life. That and is better. A new life. That is that is that is that is it. That is perfect, Hebo. God bless you. Yes, it means I have become as Peter in all things. If I become as somebody, it cannot be for one thing and not the other. Otherwise, there will be disagreement and a conflict in all things. So that's what I want us to try to understand. And that's why I say those who are of God, they are in agreement because they are now as God. See, when the Bible told us that anyone who is born of God has become God, not the capital G, but a small God. That means if you see him, you see in God in all things. Are we, are we together? Yes, sir. Read me John, please, three, five and six. John 3, 5 and 6. Yes. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, mm -hmm. and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Period. That which is born of the spirit has become spirit. You see, that is why the Bible said that those who are in Christ, they have now put on Christ. They have become as Christ, one with Christ. And this is where we have problem. This is where, we, wherever we get it today, by God's grace, we will continue. This is where we have problem. And that's why the Bible told us. If anyone wants to come to me and believe in me, let him be as I am. Pastor, read me First John, please, 3-3. First John 3-3. Yes, sir. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So you cannot purify yourself just as he is pure unless you are as he is. One with him. Let's see, Pastor, first John 4 17, please. First John 4 17. 
Yes. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, mm -hmm. so are we in this world. That is a total agreement, and that's why the Bible has told us that two cannot work together except they are in agreement, right? Yes, sir. If I start where you are now, all of you, where you are right now, you know, Martin's place and Trevor's place, and I said, I get dressed up, and you get dressed up. And we say we have an agreement. And somebody comes, you know, I say, you know, Brother Peter, I have an agreement with my professor, Bennett. Okay. He said, what's the agreement? I said, we are going to go to Ibada. Right? I'm giving you an example. We are going to go to Ibada. Everyone understand me? Yes. Then Bennett comes, I mean, Bennett, I mean uh, Bennett comes and talks to Peter. Wow, I've agreed with the Mekos Rumba. We are going to Enugu. Not in my You see? We are in trouble, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because the two minds are not together. That's what I'm talking about. We deal with the spiritual heart. Except you have that heart. When you say you are transformed, the spirit of God has now taken over. It means the heart you have is the heart of God. That's why I say, get yourself a new heart. Take away. I will take away the, the stony heart and put the heart of flesh, my own heart, heart of compassion, heart of love. Heart that will be even be crying and mourning and crying unto God and begging on God. Have mercy on this person who has offended me. How many of you have that mind, that heart? This is what you have to look at yourself. That's what transformation is. Paper told us when you take the person's image, you become the person. You cannot become the person. When you and the person are in conflict, I'm talking about true, true believers. Those who really, really want to do the will of God and please God. I'm not talking about the whole world. What's going on right now? And that's why I told you that what we're getting into now is the most difficult thing area in my country. The mind we have. We talked about that heart. But one thing we forget is that where our mind is, that's where our heart is going to go. Is it true or not? Yes, <laughs> it's true. Yes, sir. Where our mind is focused, that is where the heart is going to be directed to. And that's where the conflict, and that's a big thing in my country at this point. A spirit one who is born again is now as God, a spirit of God, one with Christ. When he said, put on Christ, has become Christ all through. You don't put on Christ, and part of it is not Christ. You say, I put on Christ. You're not working with him. You see, why do you think Jesus Christ said, in John 10, that he said, I am my father. We are one. Why? Because he has put on God. Yeah. God bless you, favor. How did he put on God? By totally obeying him. By totally doing everything. You got to understand. When he told us, I am my father at one. Then he turned around and was cautioning who? So, you know, do you know I've been with you for this long and still you have not seen me, known me? If you have seen me, seen you've seen you. my father. Why? Because 
everything about my father is what I have. So let me ask you this. We are all Christians, Christ-like, disciples, true Christians. That means if the Spirit of God is in us, that is if the Spirit of God is in us. Then we are spirit. Why? There is nothing that can ever understand another spirit except spirit. Are we together? Yes, yes sir. You cannot understand a spirit except a spirit. A spirit that can agree, spirits can relate together, flesh and blood cannot the same way. So that's why the Bible says we have to have the mind of Christ, not our own mind or mind of anybody. And I'm going to ask you a question. For the start, please give us 1 Corinthians, please, 2. 12 to 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 to 14. Yes. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, mm -hmm. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hmm. Did that sink in, my brothers and sisters? Yeah. The natural man cannot understand that. So the only the Spirit Comparing spirit all things spirit with spiritual. Because only the spirit can do that. God is spirit. There is no way anybody is going to worship him in spirit and in truth, except you are in spirit. And that spirit better be the spirit of God. So otherwise cannot worship something spirit and truth. This is the reason why the Bible says, whatever we do, we must know one thing, we must have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, Father Charles, 16. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. Yes. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. In other words, we have the mind of Christ. And look at that question that who has known the mind of Christ, the, the Lord? I'm not worried about who may instruct him. Let me put my own there. Okay, but it's not my own, but you see the same script, the same scripture. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may understand him? Or relate to him? Who is who has that? Except one who has the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. So my people, I ask you this question. This evening. And before we move on. What is the mind of Christ? Oh, first of all. First of all. Let us, let us get some understanding. What is the mind? When, you, when I say. My mind is this. What do I mean? I'm talking about what? Your aim. My aim. Who's telling me the inner man? It's Peter. Which one is it? Peter? No. Peter, where are you getting out to this? The inner man. You people have here in churches. What's the inner man? <laughs> That's in the mind. <laughs> God bless you, my brother. My mind is my aim, my desire, my will. That's what my mind is. So when you hear about mind, that's what it is. So now my question to you is this. What was or is, if you want to put it, it doesn't make a difference, the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ was to bring the lordship back to the Father. 
or for us to or for us to be like him. What is the mind of Christ? Is to reconcile us to God. Always listen to me and always listen to all of us. So that's why we are dialoguing. Okay. Remember, I remember, favor help us. That transformation is to be us. So what should be my mind? What should be the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is people to be sinless. The mind of Christ is to be like God. That's said. The mind of Christ is the mind of the Father. Okay. Christ did not have his own mind. That's what the servant, please listen to me. Christ did not have, look at the scriptures, you go through them. He told you, I didn't have my own mind. There's nothing that I did out of my own desire or my own will. Yes. Mind is a desire. Is your own will. Is your own aim. Pastor, Pastor Martin told us aim. Yes, it's my aim. What do I aim? Where are you? What do you aim? It's where your heart is going to go. Are we together? Yes, sir. So, now that you know that Christ's mind is a father's mind, that is one thing that we must understand this very evening. It's getting to almost like evening in Lagos. If you get that, then the rest will be very fast. And then that should actually help you to examine yourself carefully. If you are serious about following this Jesus Christ, are you as he is? Otherwise, if you are not as he is, he said, whoever is not with me, you're not with him. Are, are we making the, are this, are we coming to make this? Well, if, if you're not as he is, you're not with him. And if you're not with him, you are against him. Yes. So the time has come to mend and change things and do it right for the purpose of what you think that God has showed you that he has drawn you to himself. Not for any other thing that I'm talking about here, my people. So the mind of Christ was the mind of the Father. Therefore, our own mind should be the mind of who? The mind of Christ. Christ. The mind of Christ. And that mind of Christ saying the desire of the Father. And that's what we need to really check ourselves when we talk about mind, my people. Because if your mind is not only on the, the purpose, the one purpose, your mind is shifting. You will not make it there. And Christ told us that. I know what the desire of my father is. But the priority I'm telling you so that I do not have any room for distraction or to shift is that I have made that desire as my food. You know when you talk about food, food is the, like, this is it. This is the ultimate, right? Yes, sir. That's what we need to understand. Pastor, please, please give us John 4, 34, please. John 4, 34. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me mm -hmm. and to finish his work. Hmm. That my desire. Is that your desire? What is that desire? What is that father's desire, anybody? Come on now, Lagos. Our what, is that, what is that father's desire? To do his will. To, to do his will. I know, but I'm trying to take us to... Why do you think God took us back to all that purpose? If your desire is not the same as God, you have lost the purpose, the objective, the priority, the requirement. Mm -hmm. If it is not the same, because you're not fulfilling that. 
The only purpose that has called us to rot yourself is that we may be transformed to his image. If the same desire is not there to fulfill and focus on that, if the desire and our mind shifts to earthly things, fleshly things, putting them as priority before God, there is just no way we'll be able to what fulfill that purpose. If are we are we in agreement? Yes, sir. So that's where we have major, major, major problem. That's where we have major problem. It's because God has told us one thing. If actually you said now that you are born of me. That's one way of showing it. That's one thing that will be the first thing for you to show. You're not born of me. What is that? It's to fear him. My professor, bravo. Thank you very much. It's, to, it's that the flesh, fleshly loss, passion, all those desires that take priority over God they have been crucified. You see why the Bible is saying, Paul is saying, I've been crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me. What is the world? Sin. What is the world? I want us to go beyond that. I want us to go beyond sin. What is the world? The earthly desire. The earthly desires. I'm only, I am, I only added S to Professor. This of desire, desires. And many of us, that's where we have the biggest problem. And that is why, even yesterday and today, the Lord is saying, Well, we're going to be talking about spiritual mind, but do you know there is a <laughs> Do you know that the mind of Nigerian Christians, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about me. I am your brother, I'm from there. Be real and try to understand what God is talking about. Otherwise, we'll miss it. So, what he's saying in essence is that you say, mindset above. That's what it is. Is our mind set above? Because most of us, our mind is not set above. Our mind is set as far as our mouth can go. We go about saying, ah, I'm, I'm, I made it to heaven. I have ticket. I'm, I'm, my mind is set on heaven. Really? And when the small test comes, show me. And then we are prepared to mortgage our soul. To get that thing. That's not somebody whose mind is set above. So that's why I said, if you are raised with Jesus Christ, his mind is always set above to do the will of the Father, to fulfill the purpose that God has called him, and to do it very speedily. Because that purpose is not only for himself, it's for everybody else. God has called you in Lagos today, not for just for yourself. It's just that through you, he may also save other people. Pastor Charles, could you give us Colossians 3, please? Colossians 3. Yeah, can you, I don't know, sorry about that. Read from 1 to 17. Colossians 3, 1 to 17. Yes, sir. If then you were raised with Christ, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Mm -mm. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Mm. Therefore, Put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, 
evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked yes. when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, brought Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, Mm. teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. 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 Now, I want you to please take your time, find time whenever you can, Go through that, those pictures again. Please read them. Set your mind above. This is how you do them. It's not a question of sin. It's difficult for people to understand that when we say just sin. It's talking about all fleshly loss. Whatever that will hinder you from God. Whatever that will put you, whatever that will put you back to bondage and slavery again. Whatever that will separate you again. Fleshly loss, things you want, things you see, things you want to have, is what God is talking about. Because it is the mind, the desire you have, is what shifts your purpose, your objective, your priority. And that's where your obedience is going to go. Everybody, please, try to understand this. We will not be so long in this way. That's why the desire of Christ is the Father's desire. The mind of Christ is the mind of, of the Father. Christ does not have his own mind to do, to fulfill, so he can always make it at that point. Now, let us understand this question. When, the mind. when I say that, if you have been raised with Christ, set your mind above. What is setting your mind above? Be heavenly I'm, conscious. Huh? Be heavenly conscious always. What is heavenly conscious, Pastor Martin, always? Where's Pastor Innocent? Oh, Innocent. Sorry. Innocent. Sorry, Pastor Innocent. Where is heavenly conscious? Because we love that. You remember, you... We love to use grammar and words that actually we don't tell people what we're talking about. What is heavenly consciousness? You got to make eternity at the end of the day. Yeah, I know that. That's the same thing. <laughs> That's the same thing, my brother. You have to make eternity. That's the whole thing. Okay, let me tell you one thing. Humility. I believe, I believe conscious is someone that desire for a new spirit, spirit of God, a new mind, new body, new arts, to work gracious and holiness. Okay, I, I think you are becoming too elaborate like the, my professor. That's all right. But then, <laughs> now, 
If your mind is raised above, what is above? Above is heaven, right? Yes, sir. What does that tell you about heaven? What is the relationship between heaven and earth? Heaven, heaven is the dwelling place of God. Heaven yeah. rules the earth. No. Heaven rules what? Yes. Oh, I love that. Heaven rules the earth. There we go. There we go. Heaven. No, you are right. Heaven rules. Heaven has dominion over the earth. Right, my brothers and sisters? Yes. yes sir. Therefore, if your mind is set above, so how do you set your mind above as Christ? Is to live a holy life. Deny all the word they lost. Live the holy life. Peter. The Peter. Let's get that. Peter. Deny all the earthly loss. Yes. You have to make. You have to make earthly things. Nobody, please understand me. Understand me. Hmm. God is not saying, "Don't walk, don't do business." Don't do this or whatever. It's not what he's saying. Mm. Those things must be beneath. All of them on this earth, they are beneath heaven. That's what is to rule over You are sin. You are not with all these earthly losses. If, if any earthly loss or passion is still taking dominion, over that one of what of you, you are a slave. You're still a slave. You are still on this earth. Are we, are we all together? Yes, sir. That's something which God said. <laughs> he told us one thing. To seek you the kingdom first. Don't worry about that, uh, Professor. Let's not get into that. Okay, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> if you get the kingdom first, you get another. Right but God told us one thing. He said, as heaven is bigger and greater than the earth. For the child, please. As I 55, 9. As I 55, 9. Yes. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, mm -hmm. so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So now if you become as God, then the ways and the thoughts of this earthly earth are below and beneath you. Most of us have not come to that. That's why I'm talking about this mind. That's what made Jesus try to overcome. I'm telling you right now, my kingdom is not of this world. He told us. Because that's not what is there. If the heavens are higher, if you're not in heaven, no wonder I say that those who are truly in God, the spirit of God, one with them, behold, heaven is in them. The kingdom of God is within them. If the kingdom of God is within you, Emmanuel, God in me, it makes all earthly and fleshly things, let me put it this way, secondary or they mean nothing at all. There is no way. You can still have discontentment and say, oh, whatever it takes, I want to get this thing. Because you are saying that thing is what matters most to you. And that is going to throw you out when it comes to things about God. That's the mind of Christ. And that's what I want all of us to try to please, please understand. And that's why he said, heaven is my throne and the earth is what? Lagos. 
Is Lagos still there or the fruits? I think they are frozen. Yeah, they are frozen. Yeah? yeah they'll, they'll log back in. They'll, they'll get back in, hopefully. They should get back in. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm. This God is not playing. No, my brother. He's not. He's I, hope not. I hope they're able to love them. Because mm. this, this message is just, just breaking down things in a way that I've, I've never even thought of. But if you want to check with them, we'll see. I'm doing that. Today is so, it's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't, it's just, there's something about today. <laughs> uh, I love it. The breakdown of why we do the things we do. Thank uh, you. That's and, and all these things here, he, he brought a minute before <laughs> that. They're, they're coming back now and said they lost connection. Okay. okay. And you know, today is the day that I can see the clear link from purpose all the way to the characteristics. All the way. All the way. <laughs> and making it simple. So simple that we have no excuse. We have no excuse. These ways are not our ways. <laughs> And we have the brethren from India also on, on Facebook with us. Okay. And uh, Kenya. And Kenya. Um, yes, they are online with us. Aruna. Uh, Aruna. And, and uh, also Manoha. Uh, yeah. And uh, Aruna just put on Facebook that uh, this message is amazing and has been very helpful for her. That's what it's right now. Yes. Mm. I will... Are we back? Are we okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> that, that's all right. We thank God for bringing you back. So what, what we're talking about, we said that heaven is my throne. That's where I belong. Then the earth is nothing but my footstool. Meaning what? Meaning that the earth is below all the earthly fleshly laws. They are all beneath you. If they are not beneath you, your mind is not set in heaven. And you don't have the same mind of Christ. That The Bible told us that. For the child, Isaiah 66, 1 to 2, please. Hmm. Isaiah 66, 1 to 2. Yes. Thus says the Lord. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build me, and where is the place of my rest? 
For Do you understand? This? Okay. This, okay, finish it, Pastor Charles. For all these things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. Remember, my people, when, where God took us and asked us what is transformation, to be transformed. Favor mm -hmm. says is to become us. And God is saying here, the eight is my full store. This eight is below me, beyond, it's, it's, you people call it something, it's nothing. Okay? Because it's nothing. You're higher. I'm talking about one who has been transformed into the image of Christ. I'm not just talking about everybody, please. Because some people may see, even as Pastor Charles read, that spiritual things, the natural man will call it foolishness. That's what it is, because he doesn't understand. He thinks what the more important is what to make it right now. So, if the earth is a to you have dominion. You have dominion. You have control. You, the, what? No, if the heaven is your, your throne, and the earth is a to then you have dominion over the earth. That's what it means to rule over. You are ethnic and fleshly things. That's what baptism, baptism is. That's what purpose, objective. That's what priority is. That's the requirement of God. The requirement of God is this. Ethnic things must be died. And you must rise above them to be buried at the same time with Christ. So, this is one thing I just want us to all understand. That's why the Bible said, mm -hmm. Pastor, please could you read us Galatians 5, 24 to 25. Galatians 5, 24 to 25. Yes. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Mm -hmm. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Wow. If we live in the spirit, that's a very wonderful question. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Because if we don't walk in the spirit, then what? Everybody. Let us. Are they struggling? Can you hear me? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yes. Never unmute. You are muted. Can you hear me? Okay. If I, if I don't live in the spirit far far above this earthly fleshly things, then what what does that what 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 does that mean? Huh? It means you are working on flesh. Yes, that means the Spirit of God is not where? It's mm -hmm. not there. If the Spirit of God, God's God is not there, then what? If the Spirit of God is not there, that means the person is dead. Oh, the person may be dead, but that means that the person is not a child of God. The person is wasting oh. his time claiming to be a child of God. But that's Romans, please. Eight. 9 and 14. Romans 8, 9 and 14. Yes. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Mm -hmm. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of God, of Christ, sorry, he is not his. Hmm. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Those are the only ones who are the sons of God. Those who have put fleshly loss, eightly things beneath them. That's the only way. You can't tell me that the Spirit of God is in you, Christ is in you, and then, then the eight is also in use. Then you'll be serving two masters. 
and that is not going to work. And that is why the Bible has told us, he said, look, you see, when we were talking about, and we're not going to dwell that much in there, I want everybody to understand one thing. Where your treasure is, what formulates your treasure is your mind. If wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. And most of us will claim that we're serving God. But he told us you cannot serve mammon and God. And we think that mammon is who? Lagos, what is mammon? Come again, sir. Evil spirit. Mammon is evil spirit. <laughs> mammon. <laughs> <laughs> Mammon is the love of money. Okay. You say Mammon is evil spirit. So the first evil spirit is who? Devil. Devil. <laughs> Always. Until we stop until we stop talking about devil and promoting devil. The first evil spirit, my brother, is me. All these people talk about devil, devil, devil. Am I not the one bringing devil to me? Yes, sir. So that's the first and the one. That's the first. I, when, when, <laughs> when the Bible said, you cannot serve two masters, God and who? And, and yourself, yourself. And yourself. What is your name, brother? Sorry? What's your name? I'm Pastor Innocent. Oh, that's Pastor Innocent. Yeah, because why you put on glasses? I don't, I don't, I don't recognize you anymore. <laughs> the moment is yourself. And that's why if you want to have time, we don't, we're not going to go through it now because of time. That Matthew 6 from 19, read it until you get to that 33, where it tells you, don't put your mind as like the people of what? Of the world. Of the world. Because if you put your mind there, you cannot please God. You are of the world. Mm. Are we together? Mm. Are we yeah, together? Yeah, yeah. Palatine, read us Romans, please. Eight, eight, 5 to 8. Romans 8, 5 to 8. Yes. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Please try to understand this and let us get it once. We're going to move on. We're just going to move on and go to really be short because you have you are doing other things. Do you wonder why the, the second and the last covenant of God? Remember that there will be a meeting of the mind for any agreement to come to, 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 to mature. That's why I give you an example. If I get up, I said. I've agreed with Bennett and we're going somewhere. And I said, we're going to Baden. And Bennett says, going to Nugu. We're wasting our time. We can never get there together. So that's why I want everybody to understand what God is trying to let us know. And that is why, that is why, understand this one. Let us just please pick it up. That's why. God made a second covenant and the final one for that matter. Why am I calling the final one? Because Jesus Christ said it was the final one. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No way. No man comes and no one else is going to come but me. And that very covenant, God said, I'm not going to make it as the way it was before. Now I'm going to write it in your mind. Why is it chosen in your mind? 
Because your mind is what shapes your heart and where it goes. My people, if this mind is not brought subject to Christ and one with Christ, there is nothing you can do to please God. There's nothing you can do to have oneness with God. It's not possible. So he said, I'll write it in their mind and then on their heart. Pastor Chad, please let us read this. We're going to uh, stop in a few minutes. Hebrews 8. 8 to 10. Hebrews 8, 8 to 10. Yes. <laughs> because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue my covenant. Mm -hmm. and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Thank you, Pastor Charles. I will write it in their mind. You see why I said the fulfillment of it was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why when he came, he said, I came to fulfill the new covenant with my father made. And what is that? He tried to tell us the same thing that we read, in, we read right now. When he told us in John 4, 23 and 24, Pastor Charles, the same thing, but a different way. John 4, 23 and 24. Yes. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. Mm -hmm. And those who worship him must worship him in, in spirit. spirit and in and truth. truth. And that's what we've been talking about, my brothers and sisters. Now, that's the mind of Christ. If you have that mind, then you are one with him. If you don't have that mind, you're not one with him. No matter whatever you claim to be. Now, when we come back, when we come back, and I don't know, I wish I wish we can even have like a special, a special meeting with you because there are so many things we need to touch on. When we come back, we have seen the mind of Christ. The next thing you have to ask yourself: What is the mind? of Nigerian Christians. That's why it is a big, big challenge and a topic that we're going to stay for a while. What's the mind of a Nigerian Christian? And it's time to begin to change and do that which needs to be done. So, anyone, okay, let us, you can hear me. The mind of a Nigerian Christian, yes. Even this morning, the Lord was telling me, do you know that the mind that you have there, okay. and most African places, and even in, here in America, I'm talking about the church that causes the church of Jesus Christ, but with a different mind also, totally. We have what is called idolatrous mind. And you find out that every Thing that God is pointing to how our mind works is all idolatry. Even this covetousness, I want it now. I want that the Bible calls it idolatry. So, what am I saying in essence is this our own mind is where the big problem is. Our mind is set on pleasure of the moment. We want it now. The funny part of it is this. I don't know where we even we got this. We say we are Christians, and yet we tell say, every opportunity, any chance we see, even if at all it's from the devil, 
we say, this is a chance to fulfill my destiny. I've been hearing those ones. I said, destiny, a Christian, one who is of God, what should be your destiny? What is destiny? Is destiny not what is called a lifetime goal? What, what I want to be at the end of it all. And that's what we need to, we will touch on that. But not this evening, because the time, I know you're going to be going. The Lord has given us a lot. We come back, we deal with this, and you begin to find out that our loss for now, now, immediate gratification, we want to make it now. We don't care how we make it. Makes us completely different from God. Because with God, means, means you used to get to there. Those things matter more than the end. The word is reverse. The end justifies the means. With God, means justify ends. Because remember what I told you happened with that... Uh, I'll give you this example. We'll, we'll close that. We'll come back again by God's grace. Mm -hmm. Remember what happened with those people who were invited for the, the marriage wedding? And they didn't want to come. They were making excuses. And the master, the king, said, told you the servant, go and bring anybody you can find that's out there. And they all brought them. And the king came and behold, he found one who was not dressed in wedding garment. You know what he asked the man? My friend, how in the world did you get in here? It didn't make it. You were there already. It was inside. How did you make it? What means did you get there? So there is a transformation. Is it? a thorough and complete reorientation is taking a totally new form. The character of the person you say you have been transformed into. And that's where we'll start from there. The Lord has given us a lot. He wanted us to go back and try to get this understand. That is why every meeting, he does it differently because he knows the people he's dealing with. Only God knows his own people. And he's desperately doing everything to make sure there is that understanding and that they will come to it and wake up and begin to go there. Brothers and sisters, when we come back, maybe next month, I'm not here to ever criticize you or to think that I have even anywhere I've got that I have achieved anything at all. My prayer, that heartbeat of God, let me hear it. That desire, the only desire, let me do, know it and do what is right and follow him and accomplish it to the purpose. Otherwise, so what's the meaning of purpose? Was a meaning of objective and priority. Priority what? How can your priority be? This is the highest priority. And then my mind and my everything that I have is different from yours. It will not work that way. It will not be a follower. And that's why Jesus Christ told us, if anyone is my follower, this is how you know him. He keeps whatsoever all that I command. He doesn't go and do his own, just like he did when he come, came to the Father. I didn't come to do my will, only my Father's will. Heavenly Father will give you praise and give you glory. Jesus. I don't know how to thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Lagos. That you have gathered this year children who are after your heart. They are here. They are listening. They are taking their time. They are sitting down for sometimes hours. Lord, they are not only doing that, this situation here. 
when we hold meetings Thursdays here in the United States, many of them join. India, they join. Colombia, they join. Weird, weird, weird hours. They could not be hungry and looking. They're not looking for anyone but you. I pray you in the name of Jesus Christ to remember them, to remember them, Amen. to remember them, to keep Amen. them, establish them. Amen. Lord, the time has Amen. come, I cry to you. Let their spirit come and take over Nigeria. Amen. Oh Lord, use this small group to accomplish your purpose. Because you said, there's only one way people can be set free is to know the truth. And to know the truth is to live the truth, to be the truth. Yes. To do the truth is to obey all you have commanded us. What is it? Have you, have you asked us? Many of us will run around saying that we serve you. But we are doing it thinking that we are doing you a favor. Not understanding that this is your mercy, your love, your grace. And all we need to do, nothing but to pay attention. Like a child should pay attention when a parent is speaking to him. Stay out of trouble so you don't destroy yourself. The rest, I will help you, my child, and do them. But I'm not going to take the first step. Walk, walk, enter, come. But you have to do it yourself. You have to try. And all you need to do is that thing that is hindering you from taking the walk and doing what is right, remove it. Then it will work. Father, pour your spirit upon them. Lord, teach them yourself. Amen. Lord, clarify things by yourself. Amen. Remove any confusion. Amen. And I pray you in the name of Jesus Christ that, Father, you restrain forever from this day any voice that is not your voice, any contrary voice. Father, end it, Lord. Voice of false prophets Amen. and false pastors and bishops and everybody and general overseers End it today. Lord, I pray to arise in Nigeria and do a new thing and begin to put their church right because the church in Nigeria is already in captivity, being sold by people who are so demonic agents, putting people in bondage left and right. And for that, they have given room. They have allowed the enemy to come in and try to take over and destroy Lord, please let it not happen. Let your name Amen. not be wiped out from that very country. Amen. I pray you, my God, you know what is going on. Your children, they need you. Father, heal their bodies. Heal Amen. their mind. Anyone Amen. to speak, heal them. Lord. Touch them, Lord. Provide them with favor. Abundant Amen. favor, Lord, and bless them Amen. and provide their needs for them. Amen. But for the that we destroy them, remove it from their lives. Amen. We give you praise and give you glory, Lord. Amen. Father, I pray you in the name of Jesus Christ that you make a record and memorial Amen. of this very fellowship and meeting and sustain it to the end. Glory Amen. and blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Yes.